Hi, this is Paulo from DMB Academy, and in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to make bases like the ones in the track Trail of Tears by Magnitude. So, this is the original track, and we're gonna go over how to make these two bases. First one being the Reese, and the second one being this bass right here. Now I know it's not exactly the same, but I think there's a lot to learn in the workflow behind creating the sounds. Now this layer down here is just a separate sub. So because of that, we're just gonna be focusing on the tops. But before we get started with the video, make sure you get subscribed to the channel, hit the notification bell to not miss any for future videos, and to help us create more free content like this from sounds that you really like and wanna get recreated. This was a very requested tutorial, and I'm really happy to bring it now. So enough of introductions, let's get into the video. Okay, so here I have an initial dispatch, and the first sound we're gonna go over is this one. Now, this sound is very simple, but at the same time, it's a bit complex. We're essentially creating a Reese, but with more interesting harmonics. So to do that, we're actually gonna use every single oscillator. We're gonna turn on the sub to have a strong fundamental. We're gonna have oscillator B with a saw wave, for the main layer, and we're gonna have oscillator B with a complex wave table such as Reese Mess number one to have more harmonics, which by the way, this SL stands for Seamless R, which was a guest on the 174 Marathon. If you haven't seen that, go binge watch all of the videos that are on the channel. But anyway, let's move the wave tilt position to a more complex waveform like this one. You should get that sound. Now if we turn on the noise, this is what you should get. We're also gonna add a phaser filter, phaser 48 plus, route only B through it. So if we turn off everything, this should be the texture of that. And as you can see, this adds some very cool growly movements. So that's why we're adding this into this wave table. Now let's boost the unison, bring the detune down, and we can use something like an asymmetric warping mode to play with the format of the sound. So now let's turn every other oscillator on, boost the unison on A, bring the tune a bit lower and then play with the mix of the layers so we know the sub has to be really strong we can bring this saw a bit lower and we can boost this tonal layer a bit higher and we can always keep experimenting with different textures we can even, like I'm getting inspired to make a new sound by modulating the wave tail position right here. And also the cutoff. Remove the rate. And have something like that, right? That is really cool. Let's just go back into what we had. There you go. And now let's go into the effects section, turn on the distortion and boost the drive a lot. Next, we're gonna add a multiband compressor, add some gain and boost the release. Now here we can control each band separately. For example, we can boost the sub, bring the mids a bit lower and also the highs. There you go. That sounds a bit more balanced. And then we can add a filter. And with this filter, we're just gonna tame the very, very highs. Now let's jump into some post-processing. Now for post-processing, the first thing that I added was a chorus. Then I added some trash too. And what I did on trash too is I just selected a random mode. Like this one, bad breakup. 
which is here in faulty. Experimented with the drive and then I made a rack in which I have a dry signal which is actually not dry, is affected by an EQ. We may want to tweak this EQ. Then I have a stair layer which is almost like the dry one but this one has a chorus and a frequency shifter and even more chorus and the plug-in wider by infected mushroom which makes everything wider and then we have a mid-side EQ to make sure that only the very highs are in the mids and everything else is on the sides so now we're layering all of this with the dry signal and now we have a much wider base next we have a high layer and what this layer is is basically the same raw sound through a vocoder set on the noise mode with this type of curve and we can change the formant To where we want this noise to be then boosting that a lot and mixing that in with the other layers it just adds a very squelchy texture and the last layer is just the same sound but isolating this up which i saw this doesn't get affected by any other effect which i ended up not using because i added a separate sub after this but this is the rack right here then after this we have some phaser and this phaser allows us to change the formant slightly so if we put it on 100% dry width we can see how the phaser helps us change specific frequencies to have a certain feel on the formant of the sound next we have some erosion which is just noise that goes on top some extra energy on the highs and next we have an EQ boosting a little bit the lows having a notch in the mids and that is it now we can always go back into our chain and balance stuff differently for example here I boosted the high layer which is the noise one too much maybe we can go back into this EQ and change something go back into the erosion and bring back the noise try to balance everything properly and we can even go back into serum and let's try to add that movement that I got inspired to do earlier let's route A through it bring the noise a bit lower very cool let's make it slower and this is just adding an extra layer of movement let's bring this one down and so now the sound sounds like this very nice so now the next thing we're going to be making is this one which goes after this awesome so now let's jump into that sound. All right, so here I have another initialized serum. And this sound can be perceivably quite complex, but in reality, it has a few core principles that if you learn, you can make infinite sounds out of these principles. So the first thing we're gonna do is to set up our oscillators. So let's go into oscillator A and select a wavetable such as Squelchy 2, for example. That one's really cool. Play with the wave tilt position. I think we'll go back into this one later. For now, let's leave it right here. Next, we're gonna turn on oscillator B, bring it all the way down and set this into a square wave. The reason why is because we wanna run some FM from B now. So now let's boost this. And now let's boost the octave on B. Now, we can boost the unison of both oscillators.
bring the digit a bit lower. And this is our wall of harmonics to begin with. So now let's add a filter. And in this filter, we're going to change it into a bandpass 24. And we're going to create a movement into this. So let's map the phone number one into the cutoff right here. Let's bring it down. And now let's create a sequence with this LFO. So let's set this to one bar maybe, set it on trigger, and now let's create a movement in the LFO. So this is a shape that I ended up making. Resembles the original track. As you can see, when you're listening to it, it relates to this LFO. Very cool. So now let's go back into Serum. So let's just go back into our patch, which doesn't sound so amazing yet. And we're gonna map the same LFO into the mix of this filter. The reason why is because as we bring this lower with this LFO, the filter is gonna open a little bit more. So we have more highs. Just like that. Now let's boost the resonance a bit and let's also boost the drive. We can always play with the cutoff position to get different formants. But we'll go back into that later. So now let's go into the effects. And here in the effects, we're going to turn on hyper. Distortion boosts it a lot. Add a chorus. Leave it as it is. Then we're going to add a multiband compressor, which is going to squeeze the sound. Cool. And then we're going to add a filter. And now this filter is going to serve us as an extra layer of control of the sound. And we're going to map the same LFO into the cutoff right here. So it has a bit more of a controlled tail. Okay, so that's going to be it inside Serum. Now let's jump into some post processing. All right, so the first thing is to cut the sub of the sound. Then you can control specific harmonics, like this one that is very resonant. But that ended up being super compressed by these three OTTs right here. So next we have a phaser, very similar to the other patch to change the foreman. Then we have three OTTs with the same settings, amount at 69% <laughs> for some reason, the time is at a thousand percent. And we have three of those. Cool. And then we have some overdrive. And this is helping us storing the sound. Then we have the EQ8. And this EQ is essentially being used as this overdrive with very specific shapes. Because we're clipping the sound a little bit and boosting specific harmonics helps us accentuate certain parts of the sound. Now this part right here is very resonant and that may be because we need to go back into Serum and change the cutoff position. And as you can see, depending on where the filter is and how resonant it is, it's going to give you a different movement down there. That sounds very good. Let's try to bring the gain down to drive a little bit lower. There you go. And we can try to add our own flavors. For example, we can add a phaser, put the depth down, the rate down, play with the frequency. There you go. We can also play with the pitch band. For example, we can automate this to go up in this part right here. Maybe on this note, actually. There you go. And we can always revisit every part of the chain. For example, here, there's a boost right here to compensate for those frequencies. But thanks to the OTT, there's a very resonant spot right here. So maybe we can, instead of using so many OTTs, we can bring Trash 2 here. And now if we play this, 
we can use trash tool to compensate the areas that we want. For example, maybe distorting the highs will be good. So let's go into trash, set it on multiband, and let's distort the highs. Let's bring this cutoff right here. There you go. Let's try a different mode. Those are very dirty. Let's try to distort the mids too. There you go. We can also drive the lows a little bit. And now let's go back into Serum and let's actually get rid of the multiband compressor. Nice. Let's go into Trash. Let's keep playing with this. And now, as you can see, we're just experimenting with the sound and trying to introduce our own texture. There you go. Nice. So these are just a few techniques, tools, and principles to get into the workflow of creating these types of sounds. Of course, this is not the only way to make them. I'm pretty sure the process that Magnitude used to create this sound can be super different to this one, but at least I wanted to share my workflow and mindset when approaching these sounds. So that's gonna be it for the sounds and also for this video. If you liked it, make sure you get subscribed to the channel, hit the notification bell to not miss any of your future videos. And if you're gonna get access to this preset and the project files, you can become a member of Preset Pass. The link is in the description below. So thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a nice day and I'll see you in the next video.